So if your cholesterol is borderline, then often maybe just by lifestyle changes, by exercising, losing weight, eating sensibly, you get to a safe level of cholesterol, okay? Uh, or at least what is, is recommended to be safe. Uh, however, if your starting cholesterol is very, very high, or because of your risk being very, very high and you need to get to very low levels, you may not able to be reach it with lifestyle alone. So for those patients, often we will tell them upfront that they are likely to need medication uh, to achieve safe levels of cholesterol. Hello everyone, welcome to Misconception. Today with me, we have Dr. Pipin Oyo Joyo. He is a cardiologist with subspecialty of cardiac physiology. Our topic today is cholesterol, the lower the better, true or false. But if you are new here, my name is Dr. Tony Setiobudi, an orthopedic surgeon at Mount Elizabeth Hospital, Singapore. In misconception, we want to clarify misinformation and misconception about medical that is spreading around. Cholesterol, the lower the better, true or false, Pipin? Time is yours. Thank you, Tony. So, so it is true. Uh, people, patients often get confused because they may have already have some uh, circulatory illnesses. They may have heart problems. They may have had a small stroke or they have a circulation problem to their legs. Uh, and the doctors have asked them to take a cholesterol medicine, even though when they go for a blood test, their cholesterol doesn't seem too high. So why is that? And, and that is because even though your cholesterol may not be the highest in the population, it is high enough for your cholesterol to cause blockages in your circulatory system. Okay, And so for this, you should take your cholesterol medicine because we know that the lower the cholesterol, the less likely you are to get more circulation diseases in the future. So the lower, the better. We should get it yes. as low That's as possible. But I, I also heard that actually we need cholesterol. All right. So the cholesterol that we measure in our blood test measures your blood cholesterol. It doesn't measure the cholesterol in your in your heart or anywhere else, right? And so what this misinformation is that we think that the blood cholesterol reflects the cholesterol in our organs, which is not true, right? So your brain will still have its cholesterol, your heart will still have cholesterol, and your liver will still have cholesterol. But the amount of cholesterol that is floating around in the blood to cause narrowings and blockages, that we want to be as low as possible. One of the reasons we want to lower the cholesterol is that so that we don't get blockage in our arteries. But is there any danger if we limit our cholesterol intake too low? I haven't seen any danger. Now, there are, there are two things to, to understand here. We have to understand that only 20% of our blood cholesterol comes from our food. 80% of our blood cholesterol actually we our own body makes. And how much we make really is genetically dependent. So if you come from a family with high cholesterol, very likely is that you will also make a lot of cholesterol naturally. Okay, And so, so far when we look at all the studies, it seems like the lower the cholesterol, the lower the risk of heart and uh, disease is in the future. And that line doesn't seem to have a lower limit. We also know from natural experiments that some patients are born with naturally very, very, very low cholesterol. This is a this is a, a, a experiment because they have very, very good genes. And these patients live extremely healthily, right? On the other hand, those patients who are born with a very high cholesterol gene, we know that they get their heart attacks in their 30s and their 40s. So even by looking at nature, without any kind of intervention, we can tell that having very good cholesterol, having very low cholesterol uh, benefits you greatly. You explained to me that lower cholesterol will benefit the heart, but does it affect the production of hormone or production of vitamin D, for example? Yes. 
Uh, so far, no. So as far as we know, we now have drugs that are very, very effective in lowering cholesterol to the point that your cholesterol will go to only about 5 to 10% of what it, it originally was. Okay. And so those patients have completed more than five years of follow-up. And as far as we can see, their risk of having hormone deficiency, dementia, uh, liver problems, none of those exist. In fact, we see in our studies from many years ago that those patients who were given cholesterol pills still continue to benefit 30, 40 years after they took part in the clinical studies. Mm -hmm. So that means just having your cholesterol okay. low for 5 to 10 years actually gives you long-term health benefits. All right. Okay. But how aggressive do you need to lower your patient's cholesterol if they, had do if they don't have family history of heart problem or they don't have heart problem themselves? I mean, yeah. coronary artery disease. So it really depends on their, their risk. So that's what we uh, advise. You can calculate your risk very easily because there are many causes of heart conditions apart from high cholesterol, whether the patient smokes, whether they have high blood pressure, uh, on top of, of course, family history, diabetes, those are the other considerations. So there are very simple ways that doctors can calculate whether you fall into the low risk group, the medium risk group, or the high risk group. And based on your risk, uh, there is recommendations as to how low your cholesterol should be. But for example, in the highest risk group, right, the patient's LDL, which is their bad cholesterol, should be less than 1.4 millimoles per liter, roughly about 50, uh, 50 of, of the other unit uh, micromoles per, per liter. Okay. There are so many, if we look at the blood test, right, there are HDL and LDL that, that you just mentioned and total cholesterol and triglyceride. Do we need to get all these uh, parameters perfect below the upper limit? So, so the most important one is LDL. So we want to get your LDL as low as possible. That's what we're talking about uh, when we talk about lowering cholesterol. So that's the harmful one that causes the narrowings. The second okay. most important one is your triglyceride. Uh, so if your LDL is perfect, the next thing to get right is your triglyceride. The rest, you can't change. So, so th that one is, is, is not more possible. So we just work on LDL and triglyceride. Do LDL and triglyceride cause the same problem or different problem? They cause slightly different problems. So LDL is more harmful for our circulation. So that's the key thing that we want to fix. Triglyceride, the effect of circulation is a little bit less. But more worryingly, for patients with very high triglyceride, they can get pancreatitis, mm. which is an indication of our pancreas. This is the organ mix insulin uh, and right. therefore if you episodes of pancreatitis you may risk getting diabetes in the future okay okay if we have high cholesterol do we always need to take medicine or can it be treated with diet control or uh, lifestyle changes yeah so so Tony it, it depends on two things right so one is your risk right because how low does your cholesterol need to go the second thing is what your starting point is. So if your cholesterol is borderline, yes, then often maybe just by lifestyle changes, by exercising, losing weight, eating sensibly, you get to a safe level of cholesterol, okay? Uh, or at least what is, is recommended to be safe. Uh, however, if your starting cholesterol is very, very high, or because of your risk being very, very high and you need to get to very low levels, you may not able to be reach it with lifestyle alone. So for those patients, often we will tell them upfront that they are likely to need medication uh, to achieve safe levels of cholesterol. Okay, okay, Bipin. Before we end, do you have any parting message for the listeners? Yes. So my parting message to you is understand that for many many patients. Cholesterol is bad for the circulation and that the lower your LDL, your bad cholesterol, the better it is for your future cardiovascular health. Thank you so much, Pipin, for your time. 
and thank you so much the listeners for listening to this YouTube channel. I believe we are learning a lot of valuable things today. And feel free to type some comments or questions. And don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I hope to see you again in my next misconception. Bye-bye.